and it's free I'm sad that they changed it and I don't know why they did <sighs> uh, bad news guys so I made a video recently talking about k-beauty brands that had fallen off brands that had either gone out of business or had products that I really loved that they discontinued so we we all kind of like shared in my disappointment I felt like well I hate to break it to you but I <laughs> I just recently discovered a lot more of my favorite Korean beauty products and brands have now been discontinued or are not available. At least to me that is. Keep in mind I am living in the United States right now. I haven't gone to Korea in a couple of years because of, you know, current events that have been happening in the past couple of years. I was going through my makeup collection, which I do, I don't know, every six months to a year. You know, I try to make sure I'm not using old makeup, that I'm cycling through products. This time, however, I decided to not only clean through my products, but look them up online to make sure if I was going to spend time trying them out and using them and testing them, that they were at least available for me to recommend to you guys. I could not believe <laughs> how many things I loved are gone. This whole box, which is fairly deep, as you can see, and this old box, which is deep as well. And honestly, at this point, I feel like I'm gonna have to make a series because I pulled out some of the products that I, again, just wanted to like sit here and rant and commiserate with you guys a little bit about them not being available anymore and just talk about why I like them. And I've always known this, but it's quite annoying how fast the cycles are with just beauty brands in general and how quick the turnover of products are. So I think we kind of get the general gist. So without much further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this. The Innisfree My Lip Balms. When did Innisfree discontinue these? I was so sad because I have these in like eight different flavors and I love these. In fact, I'm still using them. And by the way, I'm not planning on like throwing this makeup out. I'm still gonna keep it and like reference them and maybe even use some of it still. But I love these My Lip Balms. I always compare these to the Glossier dot uh, bomb.coms I think they're called but I think that these are actually better and they came in a bunch of different scents and colors and all types of beautiful formulas that made my lips feel very soft they were kind of like a soft matte lip balm so they didn't look overly glossy and sticky they just sat really nicely on the lips and they are very affordable because they're Innisfree Innisfree does anyone miss the old school pony effect makeup? I remember again back in the mid 2010s how much I loved pony effect because at the time pony I felt like was a really good bridge in between like western beauty and eastern beauty so she had a lot of like eastern beauty trends combined with like the pigmentation and the types of products you'd recognize in western beauty products. In fact like this contour stick I remember was like one of the darkest contour sticks I could find at the time even now. I don't know why Korean beauty is not hopping on the stick trend. I know that they are popular with like skincare sticks with like Kahi and I've seen some other like Holika Holika has like a luminizing one, Tear Tear has a couple, but I just need more brands. I need more brands to do this. I need more K-Beauty brands to make darker contour sticks for me to actually use. The original like Pony Effect, like I wanna say like first couple generations of products she had, I really liked. Even the strobing luminizer, I like swatched it on the back of my hand and I was like, ah, oh, it's so pretty and like shimmery and I feel like again, I see Western Beauty products making products like this now and if that goes to show you korean beauty is definitely an innovator not only when it comes to trends because now if you look on tiktok like what's popular makeup trend wise is like more of a shimmery more natural type of look when i talk shimmery i mean like a single shadow eye but that was popular in korea for like a while and now it's popular here and like the no makeup makeup look, when that was popular, that was popular in korea first i know vanilla co is not as popular as they used to be I've seen they came out with like a new ceramide cleansing balm and I think they're trying to like go down that route because it, I don't know, Vanilla Co was always kind of a confusing brand to me because they were both like color makeup as well as skincare. But realistically, I think the one thing that is holding up Vanilla Co are their cleansing balms because they're so popular and they have multiple variations of it. But I loved their Prime Primer line. In fact, I know they still make a version of these. This is the classic and this is the hydrating. And I have the newer versions. I like the older formulations 
so much better and I don't know why they changed the formulations of these because these were like I said so much better that's just like the, the gist of it they're older formulations I liked how they performed better they did a better job and I don't know why they changed it I don't know if it was like to, to keep up with like the highly moisturizing trend but even the hydrating one this one has a little bit of a more silicone feel than the newer version but this one I like better on my dry skin than the newer version anyway so I'm sad that they changed it and I don't know why they did <sighs> I really hope they still have my prime primer hydrating powder, but I'm a little afraid to check and make sure. Let's move on to a brand. I have no idea what direction they are going in, and I'm not sure they know what direction they're going in either because they got rid of all of their good stuff. Moonshot. This is the Multi Protection Tinted Moisture. Um, I do like this, and I know that they still have another version of this available on YesStyle I've seen, but when I go to like Moonshot's English website, all I'm seeing are like lip tints and eyeshadow palettes. And I'm not gonna lie, I never went to Moonshot for eyeshadows and lip tints. I went to Moonshot for their innovative product, like the jelly paint pots. Those I thought were really cool, lightweight, interesting colors, like fade out the pigment or make it more pigmented, so very versatile in that aspect as well. <laughs> Can't get those anymore, and I don't know what happened. I will say though that the one complaint I had about that is they dried out really quickly. I mean, I think they would dry out within like three to four months. You had to really close the cap on those tight or use them up quickly, but I really liked those, and I thought they were really cool, and again, had really cool colors for a Korean beauty brand. And then the cream paints, which were cream, products you could use on basically everywhere on your face. You can use them on your cheeks, your lips. I think you could even use them on your eyes. And again, with like Rare Beauty having all of these liquid lip, liquid blushes and Say and all of these Western brands, liquid blushes are so popular now and I really feel like the cream paints were just like too ahead of their time because now I think that those would be popular and they were a nice formula, they dried down. I remember they weren't like super, super wet looking. Like they actually had a really nice finish to them and they're gone. Like I don't know if you can go into a moonshot store in Korea and still find them, but I can't get them here in the United States and I used to be able to buy them online on like YesStyle or other retailers and now I can't. And I, again, I don't know where they're going. I think they also have cushions available. It's like the only other product that I can think Moonshot has, but like I think they've just like lost their vision. But yeah, they're like, I'm, I'm confused by them. I think they're confused. Misha had some really good makeup products back in the day. And again, I think from what I've observed, Misha is leaning more into their skincare than they are in their makeup, especially here in the States, which might be why I'm not seeing a lot of these. But the Ital Prism line from Misha used to be some of my favorite makeup products, specifically the highlighters and the eyeshadows. They had the most beautiful, sparkly formulations. Again, I have this older one in the shade Touch of Light, a highlighter, and it's absolutely beautiful, pigmented, smooth, like just so nice. And I wish I picked up more, well I guess I, I say I wish I picked up more shades, but they're just not available anymore, so I can't even recommend it. And that makes me so sad because the Atal Prism line from Misha was beautiful and lovely. And I even had like my Korean friends buying this for me back in the day because they liked it as well. So when they'd see it, they'd grab some for me because they would, they would actually sell out. So I don't know what happened with this with Misha and also this product and I feel like I, I used to see a lot more starter or like base products, primer products from Misha that were really nice. The UV pore blur um, starter for Misha, this was great because not only did it help with like textural issues and the longevity of foundation, but this also had an SPF in it. So it was like the best of both worlds. I don't know if you guys are kind of like this sometimes, but for me when it comes to like layering on primer and sunscreen or sunscreen and primer, um, it's a little bit of a conundrum because I feel like trying to find something that works well on top of each other is hard. So having a product that's like all in one was so nice and they don't have this anymore. And Misha has really strong sun products. So it makes sense that they'd have strong primer plus sun products, but they don't have this anymore. They do have their sun sunscreens, which I appreciate, but or their sun milks, I should say, but now they don't have their starters slash primers. So yeah, there's like more products like sitting here in front of me that I could talk about, but I feel like I'm just gonna talk about this for days and also my camera battery is gonna die. So I think this is just my moment to let it go and 
say this is like, again, part one or part two, I guess now, of the makeup graveyard as far as Korean beauty products and brands go. If you guys have seen these or love these, or if you've noticed that they were discontinued, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I got a kick out of the discussion we had in the last video that I did like this, but I'm definitely curious to hear you guys' thoughts. And again, I'm, I know I'm missing so many other products, I mean, I have boxes behind me, so let me know in the comment section down below other products you love that got discontinued that I maybe didn't mention, and maybe I'll have to make another part of this so we can all commiserate about this together. But anyways, guys, as always, I hope you're happy and healthy, and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in my next video.